Greetings, runners. After dedicating our ninth season to fire. First, we have Snow Runner. It is an off road simulation game where players navigate rock terrains and challenging weather conditions using a variety of trucks and vehicles. The game focuses on realistic driving mechanics, requiring players to manage mud, snow, and other obstacles while completing missions and delivering cargo. It features an open world environment with a strong emphasis on exploration and vehicle customization, which can be played for hours on end to get that perfect run. And it can be very addicting. Two new maps, brimful of new activities, and new trucks from our new and prestigious partners, Kenworth and Mac Defense. Bad news is, the fuses have tripped, causing a. Of course, we have Terraria. It is a sandbox adventure game set in a procedurally generated 2D world. Players can explore, build, mine, and fight in a vast and diverse environment filled with various biomes, creatures, and treasures. The game features a deep crafting system, numerous items, and bosses to defeat, providing a rich blend of explorations, creativity, and combat. And if you have played all of it, there's always a mod to enhance the replayability of the game. And the replayability comes from its open world with extensive content, a lot of updates, and the ability to create and customize your own gameplay experience, which can keep players engaged for hundreds of hours. And if you say Terraria is more like a Minecraft, a 2D Minecraft, no it is not. It is more like a 2D RPG. So, this game is good, and you should play it with your friends. Yes, there is multiplayer in this game. Number 8, we have Stardew Valley. It is a farming simulation game where players inherit a rundown farm and work to restore to its former glory. Beyond farming, players can engage in activities like fishing, mining, crafting, and building relationships with the townsfolk. The game features seasonal changes, festivals, and various side quests. It appeals lies in its open-ended gameplay, charming pixel art, and the freedom to tailor your farm and social interactions to your liking. A dynamic world and the ability to shape your own experience, players can easily spend hundreds of hours exploring and developing their farm and relationships. And I kid you not, you cannot play this once. Oxygen not included, and I gotta say man, Kudos to my cousin for introducing me to this game, and it is a space colony simulation game where players manage a group of colonists in an enclosed hostile environment. The goal is to ensure their survival by managing resources, building infrastructures, and maintaining life support systems while dealing with challenges like oxygen depletion, temperature control, and various hazards. Its depth and replayability come from the complex systems and interactions within the game. Players must balance numerous factors, adapt to random events, and optimize their colony's efficiency. The game's intricate mechanics, procedural generation, and ongoing challenges provide endless strategic possibilities, making it compelling and engaging for hundreds of hours. And not to mention that this game has a pre pretty good quality of life, so kudos to that. And of course, this one is also made by Clay Entertainment, who made Don't Starve. So expect this game to be very challenging and you need to learn a lot. Rune Factory for Special. Now, this game, it has a special place in my heart because I got introduced this when I was a kid when I played Nintendo DS. So, of course, it is a role-playing simulation game that blends farming, crafting, and dungeon crawling elements. Basically, if you have never played anything like this, it's basically Harvest Moon with RPG elements. That's basically it. That's basically the game. So, yeah, players take on the role of the protagonist who inherits a farm in a magical world. Alongside growing crops, uh, raising monsters, and managing a farm, 
players can explore dungeons, battle monsters, and build relationships with various characters in the town. Uh, it's almost similar to Stardew Valley, but in a more anime-esque uh, RPG. And its extensive gameplay comes from the rich combination of farming, crafting, and combat systems, as well as the opportunity to engage in a deep branching narrative. With numerous activities, character interactions, and a large world to explore, players can immerse themselves in this game for hundreds of hours. <sighs> Binding of Isaac Rebirth It is a roguelike dungeon crawler where you control Isaac, a boy fleeing into a basement filled with monsters and secrets. The game features randomly generated levels, various items and power-ups, and challenging boss fights. Its dark, surreal art style and permadeath mechanics create a unique replayable experience. The game has several expansions, adding even more content and complexity. This is definitely worth trying, and it will definitely suck you for hundreds of hours. Deep Rock Galactic So, if you do like Helldivers 2, you will definitely love this game. There's no doubt about it. It is a cooperative first-person shooter, where players team up as dwarves mining precious resources from dangerous underground caverns. Set in a procedurally generated cave system, the game emphasizes teamwork as players face hordes of alien creatures, navigate treacherous terrains, and complete various objectives. Each mission involves gathering resources, fighting enemies, and making it back to the drop pod safely. The game features a mix of combat, exploration, and resource management, uh, with a focus on cooperative gameplay and team dynamics. And there's no level in this game, so really it is basically Hell Divers 2 set in a cave. And you know, the blocky art style is pretty good. Next for JRPG fans, we have Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. This game can definitely, you know, suck you in for hundreds of hours. Uh, this game is mostly like, and if you like Monster Hunter, this game will definitely keep you company until Monster Hunter Wilds come out. So it is a blend of action-oriented combat and RPG elements. Players control a party of characters, each with unique abilities and playstyles in fast-paced, real-time battles. Now. For all the characters, they all have different mechanics, they all have different abilities, and god damn man, it is just amazing. They have 20-ish playable characters, and they all play differently, so awesome, awesome. And the game features both multiplayer and cooperative multiplayer modes, where players can team up with others to take on challenging bosses and missions. Outside of combat, players can explore a vibrant fantasy world, interact with NPCs and engage in various quests and story-driven activities. The gameplay is designed to be accessible to newcomers while offering depth and challenge for seasoned players. So this game is like easy to get into and hard to master. And of course it is GTA 5. So GTA 5 offers hundreds of hours of gameplay due to its expansive open world, engaging story and variety of activities, not to mention there is GTA 5 Online. Players can explore Los Santos, complete diverse missions, engage in side activities like races and sports, and customize their characters and vehicles. Like I said, the online multiplayer mode GTA Online adds even more content with missions, highs, and regular updates, and of course you can play all those highs, missions, and whatnot with your friends. The freedom to play the game in different ways and the vibrant modding community on PC also contribute to its long-lasting appeal. This game is quite amazing in my opinion, but yeah, we do need that GTA 6. I ain't too sure that joke works, dawg. Oh, shit. Oh, shit, the one time. Be cool, fool. We got the paperwork. Whatever, you explain that shit. I'll see you at the dealership. Explain that shit, my ass. 
figured some physical training, sword work. Of course, the last but not the least, it is The Witcher 3. The Witcher 3 is just awesome. It is huge, beautifully crafted, with an epic story and tons of things to do. You've got this vast open world to explore, full of cool quests, monsters to hunt, and hidden treasures to find, and the list goes on. The side quests are just as interesting as the main story, so you never run out of fun stuff to do. Plus, with all the RPG elements, like leveling up and customizing your gear, you can really make Geralt your own Geralt. Add in the expansions and you've got the game that can easily keep you hooked for hundreds of hours. And this game is quite cheap guys, quite cheap if they are on sale. So go get this game, go play it. If you haven't, you have to do so. It is a must. And this game is why CD Projekt Red has the reputation of a good game developer before Cyberpunk 2077. So yeah, that's basically all of it. And thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And hopefully I can give you more games to play. And hopefully they're all worth it for you. So thank you guys again. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye guys. Let me finish telling it.